My question is a little uh, uh, maybe naive at this point, but uh, when we talk of, of currency, we talk of fiat currency, uh, we trust in, a, in an entity, in the case of the US dollar might be the Federal Reserve, or as long as the sovereign exists. What is underpinning the trust in Bitcoin? Trust in what? Okay, uh, that's a great question. It's a question that, that comes up a lot. And this at its core is the, is the fundamental question of where does money get its value? Right? And quite honestly, I would, I would challenge the idea that when you trust a currency, what you're trusting is an entity. I don't think that most people who spend Swiss francs do so because they trust that the Swiss Central Bank is going to offer good stewardship in managing the currency within a 2 to 2.5 percent inflation per annum band, while simultaneously managing unemployment in a grand strategy of monetary policy. Most people have no idea what the Swiss Central Bank is. They probably think there's gold in the vaults. They have no idea how money works. What they trust is that if they go to the store tomorrow, someone will give them a dozen eggs for what is it, 40 francs here? <laughs> 400 francs, something like that. That is where the value comes from. It's forward trust. It's the anticipation of future value, expecting not only that you believe in the illusion that pieces of plastic or paper have value. But the next person tomorrow will still believe in that illusion long enough to feed you. That's where the value of the money comes from, not some central entity. What the central entity does, fundamentally, is they provide a guarantee that the money hasn't been forged, which was especially important when the money was precious metal, and you wanted to know that it wasn't 30% zinc but actual silver or actual gold. And so the monarch would stamp it to tell you this is guaranteed. And in fact, it was one of the highest crimes of treason was to forge, tamper with, or slice off pieces of the money. The monarch provided a guarantee of unforgeability, a guarantee of metal purity when the value was intrinsic in the coin, or somewhat intrinsic in the coin. What exactly does the central bank offer uh, in terms of that? Because it certainly isn't a promise not to print more. Right? Um, it is, again, a promise of unforgeability. And what it says is, within this jurisdiction, you will be able to use this, at least, if nothing else, to the buyer of last resort, which is you will be able to pay the government for any money you owe the government with this money. That is the only guarantee you get, the only basis of trust you get. Um, and I would say that's relatively weak. So why do people trust in Bitcoin? Why do people trust in any of the digital currencies that exist out there? <coughs> Fundamentally, because they believe that it will still have value tomorrow and they can use it to buy goods and services. That's how I use it. I get paid in Bitcoin and then I use Bitcoin to live. And I trust that I will still be able to use Bitcoin tomorrow to live, and as long as that joint hallucination rolls forward, uh, we have value. So the value is really in the community. It's in the economic activity of all of the participants, in the understanding that we are all using this to, to trade. Um, and the second part is that I trust it can be forged, because I've read the algorithms and I know it can be forged. It can be faked, right? And it can be diluted, so I have that level of trust. That's all it is. I believe that other people will find it useful in the future, and that's the basis for all money. Now, behind that, a very large amount of energy expenditure and computation for Bitcoin that ensures that it is also rare. I just wanted to add a statement uh, to your answer you gave to the gentleman in the back regarding the value. Yes, uh, thank you. Trust for the value, and, but I, when I get confronted with questions about Bitcoin, I often hear it's a less intrinsic value because, in fact, it's, it's true what you say. A lot of people think that 
I can go to the National Bank and we can kind of try to convey to me some amount of gold. Silver or gold, yes. Yeah. Kind of Hold bad. it a bit closer to your mouth so it can Okay, I'm yeah, sorry. perfect. Um, so I just wanted to add that for me it's it's intriguing and also ironic that for me the intrinsic value in Bitcoin lays in its non physicalness, exactly in, in those mathematical uh -huh. properties which make it non physical. Rather than intrinsic value, I, I like to use the term intrinsic utility. Uh, because the truth is that systems of money that have intrinsic value make for not very good money. Uh, because the intrinsic value of the money dilutes the purpose. Money is, is meant to be an abstraction of value by which you communicate value, not value itself. Uh, if you can eat the money, uh, then some people will choose to eat the money causing a deflationary situation, because there is a reduction in the supply of money, because people ate it. Right? Uh, you know, so if you chose bananas as your money, that doesn't make a very good system of money. Um, things that have intrinsic value, their intrinsic value may change abruptly due to circumstances. If you use water as your money and you have a monsoon, your money supply went to shit. If you have a drought, suddenly your money supply is you know, much more different than it was before. So the best forms of money don't have intrinsic value. Uh, intrinsic value is an illusion that we've created in order to better explain money uh, at a level of a five-year-old, which is the same level we explain it to everyone in our society forever. Um, and instead, I think intrinsic utility is a great concept. That Bitcoin is useful, and it has uses that can't be done by other things, and that intrinsic utility isn't forward-looking. It's practical. So thank you for adding that.